Hey guys, welcome back to Lawrenceville Garage. You know, one of the systems on your vehicle, whether it's a truck, car, or street rod, that tends to get expensive pretty quick if you're not careful is the air conditioning system. Now, a lot of guys uh, up north, or at least guys who have cars that maybe they only drive on the weekends or uh, car shows and stuff, maybe you don't need air. But if you're a, driving your car or truck daily or a lot, or you ever intend to have your wife or girlfriend in the car with you, and it's summertime, air conditioning can be very important. The shop truck is going to have AC because in Texas, especially with the humidity during the summertime, it gets hot and it's just miserable without it. And I'd rather have it than to not have it. I want to show you some of the compressors that are available and why we chose to use this one. Okay, what you're looking at is a radial compressor or it's called an R4. This is what originally came on the 91 truck, and it's common to most of your GM trucks of the era. It worked reasonably well, but when you want to use this particular type of compressor with the LS swap, you're either going to have to buy some aftermarket brackets to make it work. The blue truck, the, the blue 95 truck that we swapped earlier, had a radial compressor, and we used the factory bracket that was modified to work. And it did work, but we also went through a couple of compressors. And I don't know if it's just because of the design or what, but they just are not as efficient as the more modern Sandin style, which is what comes on the LS engines. Now, this is the factory compressor still mounted to the engine. And it works well, it mounts down low. However, that can create a problem. And that problem is the frame. Looking inside the truck, the way the frame is designed, where the engine mounts here, the frame uh, turns in here a bit and really tightens that space up, and that can create a real problem. But the real issue, at least on this particular swap with this particular uh, engine mounts, is space. And you can see, sorry, and you can see right here with the engine on the stand where the mounting bolts are for the, the motor mount. And here's the back of the factory compressor. Now the particular sliding mounts that we're gonna use are gonna to have to mount in at this, at this level right here. And you can already see there's a problem with the compressor. It's way too tight, there's no room. And here's this uh, pressure sensor on the back that is gonna be in the way. So that is why at least in this situation, why the factory compressor will not work. It's an efficient system, but it's too long, it hangs too far back, and it gets in the way of the mounts. That's not to say with a different mount wouldn't allow you to still try to mount the engine in that frame with this compressor and have some room, but that isn't the, that isn't the mount that we're working with. So let me show you another compressor. This is from Dirty Dingo. And look how short it is. It is much shorter than the factory piece. You can see the difference. Several inches shorter. So that's the one we're going to go with. And with the kit, it came with the uh, brackets to mount it with, the hardware, it's all separated out along with the correct spacers tensioner. This is the manifold that goes to the compressor that mounts the two AC hoses. Here are the fittings that attach to that. The only problem we might have, and I was told, and we'll find out shortly, is that when you screw these on, due to the, the size of the angle of this 90 degree, that that will make some contact with your frame. So what we need to do is remove the factory compressor from the engine, mount up the smaller dirty dingo compressor and lower it into the engine bay and mount the engine on the mounts uh, and position it where it needs to sit. And then we can base that off of where it might make contact in this area of the frame for those 90 degree fittings. And then we'll modify the frame here. The information that I was provided with, again, this is what I'm told by the uh, uh, technical support at Dirty Dingo, is that if I went with a custom manifold, 
I wouldn't have to modify anything. But I really don't want to do that. I want, I want it to try to be built with off-the-shelf parts. So in doing that, we're going to lower the engine in with the compressor. Uh, we'll find out where in this area for the frame we're going to have contact. And then we will mark that and then begin our frame modifications. And what I really like about using this style compressor is that it doesn't alter the serpentine belt system on the engine. You're still going to use your factory serpentine belt. The secondary belt actually goes to the compressor, uh, is a similar size, and Dirty Dingo provides you with the part number of the belt specifically for that. So those are the three compressor choices, the one we chose and why, and we will hopefully get all this bolted together, and in part two, we will address dropping the motor into the engine bay, bolting it down so we can see where the contact would possibly be, and making those frame modifications. So, appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, you won't want to miss what's coming up. This is really great stuff. I'm looking forward to having air conditioning and using a factory style sanding compressor. And uh, the one thing you will notice, if you look down in the comments below, I will go through the expense of what these parts cost. However, because it's actually not necessary for the actual shop truck budget at this point in the build, I'm not going to include the total price of the AC parts with the build. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Stick with us for part two.